This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I will cover three types of elasticity of demand, own price elasticity, cross price elasticity, and income elasticity. Before I discuss elasticity of demand, remember that we can use constrained utility maximization techniques to derive a consumer's demand functions for good X and Y given a utility function. For example, suppose an individual's preferences are represented by the Cobb-Douglas utility function u equals x to the one-half times y to the one-half. We can derive her demand functions for x and y by using either the Lagrangian method or by starting with the tangency condition, the MRS set equal to the MRT, solving for one good and plugging into the budget constraint to solve for the other. Here's a reminder of what that process looks like. Now that we have the demand functions for good x and y, we can find out more about a consumer's preferences for each of these goods. For example, we can determine if a good follows the law of demand. The law of demand states that as the price of a good decreases, the quantity demanded will increase, and vice versa, ceteris paribus or holding all else constant. We can analytically determine if a good satisfies the law of demand by checking the sign of the derivative of the demand function with respect to the price. If dx dp of x is less than zero, then the law of demand holds for good x. More generally, the law of demand for a good holds when the derivative of its demand with respect to its own price is negative. In the case where x is i over 2p of x, dx dp of x is negative, telling us if the price of x goes down, the individual will purchase more x. Likewise, for good y, dy dp of y is also negative, telling us that if the price of y goes down, the individual will purchase more. Both goods follow the law of demand. If we had specific values for income, p of x and p of y, then these derivatives would tell us how much each good would change or how many units each good would change by as there is a one unit or one dollar change in price. For example, say that income is 100 and the price of x is 2. dx dp of x is therefore a negative 12.5. This means we predict that if the price of x goes down by a dollar, the quantity of x demanded will go up by 12 and a half units. Or if the price of x goes up by a dollar, the quantity demanded of x will go down by 12 and a half units. Elasticity of demand, also called price elasticity of demand or own price elasticity of demand, similarly predicts how the quantity demanded of a good will respond when its price changes. However, unlike the derivative of demand with respect to own price, elasticity of demand is a units-free measure. It tells us the percentage by which the quantity demanded of one good changes for a percentage change in price. Having a unit-free measure of responsiveness is important particularly when we're comparing responsiveness across goods with very different prices. For example, a $1 increase in the price of gasoline is very different than a $1 increase in the price of an airfare. As you'll see, elasticity of demand incorporates the derivative of demand with respect to own price, but is more than that. To see this, first let's start with the Econ 101 definition of elasticity, which says that elasticity of demand is the percentage change in the consumption of X divided by the percentage change in the price of X. First, let's utilize the following rule of percentages. The percentage change in X is the change in X divided by X, and the percentage change in the price of X is the change in price of X divided by the price of X. Now we use the rule of fractions, which says if you have the change in x divided by x, all divided by the change in the price of x divided by the price of x, 
You take the fraction in the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator to now get this formula. One last step, instead of looking at the change in x for a change in the price of x, we will get more precision by looking at the derivative of x with respect to the price of x. dx dp of x will tell us how x changes for an infinitesimally small change in its price. So that means elasticity of demand is part derivative or slope of the demand and part ratio of the price and quantities at which we are calculating elasticity. Because price and quantity are always positives, the sign of elasticity of demand depends entirely on the sign of its derivative component. Therefore, when dx dp of x is negative, elasticity of demand is also necessarily negative, revealing once again that the law of demand holds. Now let me show you how you can derive elasticity of demand when given a demand function or when given a utility function from which you can then solve for demand. For example, let's return to the utility function and corresponding demand function for good x given at the start of this video. To derive the elasticity of demand, first take the derivative of the demand function for good x with respect to the price of x, then multiply this derivative by the price of x divided by x, where instead of x, what we're going to plug in is the demand for x. Now we have to simplify this as much as possible. First, recognize that income is in the numerator and the denominator. Two is in this denominator and this denominator of the denominator, so those cancel each other out, leaving me with p of x divided by 1 over p of x, which is p of x squared, and then divided by p of x squared, so all these p of x's cancel each other out, and what I'm left with is a minus 1. What does that number mean? Well, first, the fact that it's a negative 1 or the fact that it's less than 0 tells me again that the law of demand holds or that there's an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. In absolute value, elasticity equals 1, so we can label demand as unit elastic. Finally, what the 1 means is that for every 1% change in price, there's a 1% change in the quantity demanded. For all Cobb-Douglas utility functions, regardless of the exponents, elasticity of demand is a minus 1. Remember that elasticity measures the responsiveness of one variable to a change in another. In that way, there are lots of different kinds of elasticities we can calculate. For example, we could calculate the elasticity or how responsive the number of dates you get in a month is to a change in the number of times you shower. We could calculate how responsive your grade is to the number of problems you practice. In that way, elasticity of demand can be expanded to include the responsiveness of the quantity of demanded of one good to a change in other variables. For example, cross-price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of the demand of one good to a change in the price of the other. It's calculated as the percentage change in the quantity demanded of one good, like good x, that results from a percentage change in another good's price, or like the price of y. Using derivatives, the formula is dx dpy times the ratio of py to px, where again, x here represents the entire demand function for good x. Because the price of y and x are both positives, the sign of cross price elasticity of demand for good x with respect to the price of good y depends entirely on the derivative component of elasticity. If dx dpy is positive, 
then the cross price elasticity of demand for X with respect to the price of Y is positive, reflecting that the two goods, X and Y, are substitutes. If the derivative is negative, then cross price elasticity of demand is negative, reflecting that the two goods are complements. And if dx dpy is zero, then the cross price elasticity is zero, reflecting that the two goods are unrelated goods. Returning to our Cobb-Douglas example, x equals i over 2p of x, which means dx dpy is zero, making the cross price elasticity of demand for good x with respect to price of y zero. That's true for all Cobb-Douglas utility functions. The demand functions for both goods will be independent of the price of the other good. That is, here, changing the price of y has no effect on the demand for x, so the cross price elasticity is zero. We can also calculate the responsiveness of demand to a change in income. We call this income elasticity of demand, and it's calculated as the percentage change in the demand for x divided by the percentage change in income, or the derivative of demand with respect to income times income divided by the demand for x. The sign of income elasticity will be determined completely by the sign of its derivative component, dx di, since income and x are both positives. When dx di is positive, income elasticity of demand is positive, revealing a good to be a normal good. Where dx di is negative, income elasticity is negative, which is true for all inferior goods. And when dx di is zero, income elasticity is zero, which defines an income neutral good. For our Cobb-Douglas example, income elasticity is a positive one. This is true for all demands from Cobb-Douglas utility functions. That is, income elasticity will be positive because the goods are normal goods, and income elasticity will equal one, telling us for every 1% change in income, there's a 1% change in the demand.